Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I am the host of the Low Carb Fat Adapted Athlete, helping you be the fit and healthy athlete from the inside out. Hopefully, you are on a mission to burn fat, but also, more importantly, be healthy and improve the aging process. So, as I've been diving into all year, this year, 2022, going into 2023, still talking about fueling for the athlete, for the endurance athlete. And I'm going to repeat myself again on my new solo podcasts and videos. So you can watch the slides on my YouTube channel, The Low Carb Athlete. And I really think it's important to work on your individuality, that all this information is such an equals one experience. So we want to experiment, figure out what is the right amount of food for you. And that's going to vary on the day. And I've been explaining my journey on the podcast, but also Instagram and Facebook on the low carb athlete page. You can learn more, but I think it's important to look at what we're doing now and what we're doing based on your training cycle, your day of the week. <laughs> There's so much to it. So let's look at fueling for the low carb athlete. And if we should be fed before a workout or fasted. So I keep going into research because it changes the stuff. I find articles on fasted exercise a few years ago, are even different because I think a lot of people, researchers found out these studies are based on men and we need to now pay attention to the studies and the recommendations, but then you need to look at who is this study on. So should women do fasted exercise? Should men do fasted exercise? When should we eat beforehand? Realize women are not the same as men and what type of workout intensity are you doing and duration is going to change the fuel plan. I also look at what was your day before, what time did you eat dinner? What did you eat? How long you've been fasting from dinner to breakfast? Maybe it's time to break your fast. And that might be something, a little bit of calories before you go work out. So looking at is my performance and uh, my goal, or am I just trying to burn fat? So that changes the plan a little bit. And then, as I said, the duration, if I'm doing an hour workout or am I going three hours, it's going to be different. So we want to really look at your stress level. How is your sleep? Really look at all your biometrics to decide when food might be beneficial to you, your performance and your health and your hormones. Because I think when I look back, when I started getting into metabolic efficiency testing 2005, when I started doing more fasted exercise and just trying to eat fat, drink fat coffee in 2009, uh, I was still doing Ironmans until 2012, 2013. I got adrenal exhaustion I was forced to quit racing, but I find looking back that I was probably trying to do all this stuff too much. So what I'm trying to do and repeat myself, I know every week saying the same thing over and over again, but trying to express it in different ways. So looking at your stress level is really important because if you are exercising at a high level, doing a lot of high heart rate workout and you're not sleeping and your work is stressed and you've just got life chaos, you know, really have to realize when fasting and fasted exercise can be interpreted by your body, your hypothalamus, that that is another source of stress. So, you know, taking track, keeping track of your heart rate variability, keeping track of your resting heart rate. Is it higher than normal? All this will tell us if our body's under stress, are we in sympathetic dominance? So going back to a Ben Greenfield session presentation he gave for Dr. or Dan Pop Pompa, um, this is 2018. So this is 2022, 23. 
10 benefits of fasted exercise. Yes, we know this information and we're going to go over this, but then we have to break it down. When is it appropriate? So fasted exercise, and I know Ben talks a lot about this is low heart rate, get up and go. So burning more fat, number one, number two, these are not in order, anti-aging effect, better brain function, increased growth hormone levels, improved insulin sensitivity, increased testosterone, enhanced fat loss, better endurance, more stable gut during exercise and hunger management. So you can go back and find a podcast. Ben Greenfield had its recording from a seminar he gave at the Pompa. I forget what the conference is called, but it was a good one. I've listened to it many times because there's tons of information in there. So it's good information on there. So four types of exercise, if you're trying to be in ketosis, this is an article infographic I shared on my screen here on, if you are in ketosis, if that's a goal, and we'll talk about that's not a goal for you all the time, unless you are, uh, epileptic seizures is an issue, cancer, any Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, stuff like that. But, you know, keto flex, I'm more a fan of and flexibility of everything. We're in and out, not doing the same thing all the time. So anyways, number one, aerobic exercise is cardio, long duration, low intensity, fat burning. So this is called now zone one, zone two. But as you know, of a endurance athlete, we've talked forever about Phil Maffetone's math, max aerobic function, heart rate. And that would go into this as an endurance athlete where we want to spend 80% of our time. Now, anaerobic exercise, another type that's going to use a different fuel source, right? So aerobic exercise, why nutritional ketosis, why fat adapted athlete is good for endurance, not necessarily being in nutritional ketosis. I don't think you need to be deep ketosis at all for training during your training, but you should be long distance depending on fat as your main fuel source. We should be able to kick into our carb metabolism when we go into the next type of exercise, anaerobic exercise. So if you are doing heavy weightlifting sessions, hit training, when you go say 170, 180 heart rate, and then recover down to 120 heart rate, that's high, low heart rate training, hit high intensity interval training, short duration burst training. You know, you're, you're getting into that carb metabolism. So this is where we need to time our carbs. If we focus on what we talk about carbs is carb tolerance, but what type of carbs, not the bars and the gels and the goos and stuff like that. We want to more look at eating real food and getting nature's carbs, but timing those. So we go into that in other episodes talking about getting nutrient dense whole foods in your food plan and dinner. Maybe that's where you place those carbs strategically. So you're doing a morning workout that's anaerobic, you'll have some fuel. So number three, flexibility exercises, yoga, stretching, supportive soft tissue, green demotion. I call it, you know, the foundations video. I give my clients a lot of times, 12 minute foundation drill to do three times a week. I give people links, Travis Ellett, yoga, power yoga, really need to work on flexibility. I know I need that just as much as the strength training. And stability exercise is more probably Pilates, stability exercise, balance core training. So the different types of exercise that are good nutritional ketosis. So I just always want to clarify, I hate saying ketosis. I just like think you should be burning fat and be able to be low carb during these exercises. Anaerobic, I would say you depends on what you're doing. If you're doing HIIT training all out, you may benefit your performance will benefit if you add a little something in there. So let's go into precision nutrition chart. I've shared this before. So if you're exercising less than 90 minutes, if you're exercising longer than 90 minutes, there's a great infographic on my slides. If you're on YouTube exercise intensity, we go, look, Hey, is it low? Is it fat burning or is it high? I'm going to be born more cars, glycogen storage. So if we're going to have a high heart rate. Maybe we need a little bit of carbs. Maybe it's 10, 20 grams of carbs and protein pre-workout. And then that is showing the benefit. The purpose of each workout is a fat oxidation, cell signaling, aerobic capacity, cell signaling, signaling, 
fat oxidation performance. So if you're going longer distance and you're adding speed workout, that's where you want to look at your pre-workout nutrition. So this is by precision nutrition. So you can watch this video so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's get into the big topic that's ever, uh, on going <laughs> and I'm going through these again, but exercising in a state of glycogen depletion after eight to 12 hours overnight fast, the liver is empty of glycogen and your liver stores about 300 to 400 calories. Your muscles store the rest. So say me, you have like 2000 calories stored of glycogen. That's why we want to depend primarily on our fat stores are say around 40,000 calories. So you want to be able to have fat and carb metabolism working. So we call it metabolic flexibility, but having that main fuel tank be coming from fat and be able to switch. And that's why it's important not to stay in nutritional ketosis all the time. So you'll hear that a lot more lately. So beginning to tap into the muscle glycogen stores, the protein repair mechanisms begin to kick in as growth hormone and testosterone increase in fasted exercise. Even if you're fasted four to five hours, so eating lunch and then going to work out before dinner, there that can be called fasted exercise. So kind of not eating a while before you work out. So if you ate lunch at 12 o'clock and then you work out say four hours later. So intermittent, this is more for athletes. So intermittent fasting eight to 12 hours. So say you're 8 PM to 10 or 11 AM or lunch is at 1 PM or two. And then you have dinner at seven. This is probably notes I have from Ben Greenfield because he eats later at night than I do. But ideally exercise in the early evening when the body's in prime condition, a fasted from lunch to your hard workout session. So if you're working out, say four o'clock, you know, eating lunch and then waiting to eat dinner after your workout. So let your body get the benefits of that fasted workout of the insulin sensitivity and the growth hormone testosterone. Now, what we talk about, what type of fasted exercise is best in the morning is low stress exercise, low heart rate. So natural, uh, natural, easy morning sunrise walk, nice swim with time in the sauna, maybe do some yoga in there. Naturally, our cortisol in the morning should be higher. So we don't want to activate our sympathetic nervous system more so is our cortisol is already elevated. So you'll see your glucose is higher in the morning. So you don't want to do a hard workout in the morning or a hard fasted exercise because we're adding more stress on top of stress. So save the hard workouts later in the day, if possible, when your body is in peak state to work harder. So if you look at the best time of day, circadian rhythm to do what activity you can see that it's in late afternoon, early evening is the best time to work out. And of course you don't want to work out too close to bed because you probably figured out that messes up your sleep. If you work out, like we have Tuesday night track workout, I'm going to start doing, but it's at 6 PM and it's going to interfere with my sleep that usually I'm in bed around 8 PM. So that is an issue for me <laughs> to deal with. So why should athletes fast or do we even need to fast? This is a conversation I like to dive into periodically because Rob Wolf said last year, you know, we're already stressed out. So fasting, as I just said, is like exercise is another source of stress. So we've talked before about hormesis is that acute stress at little dose. And that's so the Goldilocks effect is just a little bit, not too much, just to cause that good positive response that we rebuild and get stronger. So like lifting weights is a hormetic stress. We, I do five reps of heavy pull-ups or chest press or something. And then I recover and repair and do that again in 48 hours. So you want to look at as stressors, we're not doing too much. It becomes chronic or that you're overloading that beaker of stress. So athletes were already often busy, overscheduled, ambitious, high performers that fasted exercise. That means just coffee, 
black coffee, water, herbal tea before a workout can be beneficial for some, but others it may be stress. So the hack for that is adding some scent like Keon Aminos and other things I do is put cream in my coffee. Cause I, now I feel like, Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not stressing my body out. Cause I'm adding a little bit of heavy cream with some bubs, collagen and MCT oil, blend that together. In my magic bullet, add a little sea salt, a little cinnamon, and it is amazing. And I just have a few sips. I don't even ever finish that cup before I work out, but just having a little bit of calories, I'm not truly fasted, but I'm still in a fat burning state. So my body doesn't get stressed. So having a little bit of calories I'm experimenting with, is that better for me? Because I am obviously a female athlete and, you know, looking at the research as Rob Wolf says here on this slide, if you're already stressed from heavy training, work demands, personal concerns, ease up in the fast and your body will appreciate it. Hormonally men and women are different and long fasting periods are not suggested for women. This is from Rob Wolf and keto gains. They did a great article a couple years ago. We suggest that keto gains a more conservative approach of for women doing a 12 hour fast, 12 hour eating window or 16, eight intermittent fast protocol. Females can benefit by breaking the fast before training with a protein shake, maybe some fat in there. So same with my coffee. I don't like to work out with any food in my stomach. So having a little bit of coffee with calories or some tea or you know, I don't make a shake in the morning. That's too much. I'd still probably regurgitate if I work out. So having a few sips of coffee with the bubs collagen, which you can get, I think we had a discount code for that low carb athlete bubs is in Encinitas. So we want to look at men 12 to 16 hours. They can do a fasted workout women 12 to 15 hours. They can do a fasted workout most times of the month, but not luteal phase. Keep it 12, 15 hours if you're used to it, but just make sure you're not doing anything hard anyways. So again, um, seminar Ben Greenfield talked about, we kind of going over this again, if you're doing a harder workout session and you're going to do it fasted, you want to save that workout for the afternoon, early evening. If you've been doing a fast, been fasting for eight to 12 hours and your workouts in the morning, then prioritize a post meal workout with getting your protein macros in there. Many people who do hard workout in the morning, but then do not then not eat afterwards often may see a result of lowering their hormones or those that work out too much and not eat enough. And I did a whole podcast on LEA low energy availability for female athletes. I struggled with this on my own. I mean, I believe this is true because I'll go work out in the morning and sometimes stay and work at the bay club and I can't eat anything there. So if I forget to bring food with me and I don't eat till I get home at one o'clock, well, all I had was coffee after I lifted and me ran and yes, I can go for a while and not feel that hungry to about 12 o'clock, one o'clock. And to me, I think I'm probably, that's where I get in trouble. If I did that every day, like I used to do before I closed my fitness studio. I just not eat till I got home and I was fasting way too much with too much activity. So that low energy availability is an issue to strip hormones. And my hormones are not pretty. My thyroid panel's low, my estrogen's low, my DHA is low and, uh, cortisol has been low and I'm trying to, it's getting better, but that's been a long time. So remember to just be loving to yourself, I guess is the right word word. And just making sure you're not overdoing the fasted exercise for females that you're always going into workout extremely glycogen depleted from overnight that we can disrupt our hormones. So men can handle it a little more. We have that kiss peptin hormone we'll talk about again. So if you're getting up in the morning, you're doing a hard workout session, you've been fasting eight to 12 hours for a man, make sure you have your post-workout nutrition scheduled. So packing, shake. Maybe put your powder mixture. I like Keon whey protein. Paleo Valley has a new whey grass fed whey with colostrum and then add some glutamine in there. There's, um, health code. There's equip. There's great brands out there with grass fed whey protein. That's good post workout with a little bit of carbs. Maybe add some, um, yeah, coconut milk, or if you can try a little splash of heavy cream, 
little bit of avocado, but if you're just on the go, just maybe have it in a shaker bottle and you're ready to go. Now that's, if you're a man, you're better eating afterwards and doing a fasted workout. Women, we may perform better and we're actually more efficient at burning fat longer period of time. We'll get to that another slide. But if you are a female eating a smaller workout snack after fasting, non-insulogenic is 20 grams essential amino acids. So you can take Keon aminos. You can do the capsules or drink, have some MCT oil in your coffee. As I said, that will keep me burning fat for that workout. It won't cause my insulin glucose to go up and then insulin be alerted, activated. So we want to make sure it's non insulogenic for our fuel. We have beforehand a workout. It's a little smaller snack before your workout might help for the female athlete instead of fasted. So remember, I just think that's great because it gives me permission to have something in my coffee. And I love that. So if you're going to do a really hard workout, something that's an hour long strength training or CrossFit wad, something like that, that's hard. That's if you want to eat something beforehand. Again, I look at what people eat the night before, what your stress level is. And then decide if you should do it hundred percent fasted. Remember that means nothing in your coffee. <laughs> it's not just water. And so you want to just be aware. Okay. So again, the kiss peptin hormone is more sensitive in women than men. And if disrupted, the sex hormones not are not produced as they should be. If the brain perceives a deficiency in nutrients, female athletes, we do this a lot, especially carbohydrates is a marked reduction in this peptin stimulation. So this can increase appetite and reduce sensitivity to insulin. Some research shows that intermittent fasting may cause impaired glucose intolerance in women, but not for men. And I don't have the reference where I got this. That's not good. So I think anything Dr. Stacy Sims would say this, if you look up hormone kispeptin, it's some research on it in PubMed, but just think if the brain perceives a deficiency in nutrients, it's protecting you because your our body's pretty amazing. It's designed to help us reproduce. And even if you're not trying to get pregnant, your body's still doing what it can to keep you safe. So if you are doing too much fasting and too low of calories and too much exercise, we're getting that low energy availability. Our body's going to think, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm being attacked. I, I need to protect her. I need to go in safe mode. I'm going to put everything on hold. I'm going to increase your appetite so we can eat more and reduce sensitivity to insulin. So then we need to pay attention to that, right? So if you're having weird insulin sensitivity and you're hungry all the time and you just can't lose weight, well, you, I actually might need to eat <laughs> food at the appropriate times, maybe before a little bit. It's not a lot before you work out. Just like 20 grams is much. So then we look at should, why should you do fasted exercise? What are you trying to do? If you're trying to do autophagy, which Dr. Mindy Pels talks about all the time. Yeah. You know, do a fasted workout or fasting, but don't work out during it. You know, talk to Dr. Mindy and listen to the podcast we just did on my video YouTube channel. And this past year, we did a previous podcast with her all about this for athletes, but fasting keeps blood sugar and insulin levels low, but guess what? <laughs> so does exercise. So we want to look at autophagy is imp helps with longevity. So that's obviously, hopefully a goal for yours is not just performance gains in your races this year, but training for your future self and improving longevity. So when autophagy is compromised, the risk of degenerative disease rises. Fasting flips this longevity program for free. This is by Rob Wolf in his fasting guide ebook. Now coffee strength training, getting some sun, also enhances autophagy. So you can do all these things instead of just fasting, or maybe you'd mix it up, but just match your fasting days with your active recovery days or your deload week. And make sure you're looking at the female cycle as we do with Dr. Mindy. So if you want cell autophagy, strength training and getting out sunshine, 
also helps that. So we don't need to maybe all of us athletes, maybe just need to just do three days of strength training a week or four days as Rob says. Let's look at what Dr. Dan Plews talks about because he's working on the Ironman athlete in his program in GRIQ on fasted exercise, fasted training and training with low glycogen availability are beneficial for improving training adaptation and fat adaptation for the endurance athlete training too much. Again, the word chronic, chronic stress, anything chronic, anything too much more is not better. Less is more, right? So anything too much chronic with low energy availability can lead to hormone imbalance, endocrine disruption. The female triad comes from low energy availability. So go back and find my video I did on L E A low energy availability. So the male, the male endurance athletes can also experience some of this too. So if you do too much fasted exercise, just be aware you're not having hormone imbalances. And how do you know that you should get lab testing every three months. You can find my link all to labs. There's always 20% discount off those labs and you can just go to lab core, get your labs done and then work with me or another practitioner that puts them in optimal range and figure out nutritional therapy benefits and supplements to take that are more natural to improve your hormone balance. But it's more looking at the why, because if you just take testosterone or take DHA, I just talked about the other day, it does not fix the problem. It's a whole holistic approach. So intermittent fasting for athletes. Another article I found simple evidence suggests that regular intake of protein space throughout the day are better than larger intakes consumed less often. Given that high level athletes require too much or require much more nutrition than the non-elite athletes must spread out these nutrients across the day when they have multiple daily sessions. This time restricted approach seems to be sub optimal option. They go on to say, however, recreational athletes who train for shorter durations with less intensity therefore have lower energy demands. Intermittent fasting may be appropriate and especially for those needing weight management. If you have more than one training session per day, as many elite athletes do, I know I run and lift and swim and bike if it's not cold and rainy, intermittent fasting could make it harder for you to consume both before food, both before your first session and after second sessions. This is an article from simplefaster.com on intermittent fasting athletes research. I could talk about this article for a while. I'll just say my experience. I used to do a lot of OMAD. As I said, I fasted all day and then didn't eat till I got home and I realized, oh, that's called OMAD one meal a day and intentionally. And then it got to be intentional. Now go to what we're talking about these days, this past year, what's the big topic? Protein, protein, 2022. Let's say <laughs> the biggest change in our conversation in our industry is get your protein, your macros, 20, 30, 40 to 50 grams max spread out throughout the day, every three, four hours. Your, if your goal is to gain strength and build muscle and help avoid the loss of muscle as we age, we want to do what Dr. Gabrielle Lyon talks about. I would say Leon, I was corrected. Dr. Lyon, she talks about one gram of protein per pound of your ideal weight. Other calculations are by lean body mass. I just find it easier. If you want to weigh 125 pounds, that is how much you should have a day of protein, 125. So simplify it. If you're 150 pounds and you want to get that, hit that macro of 150 grams of protein in a day, and you only can absorb, break it down 30, 50 grams at once. And you're eating one meal a day. <laughs> Hello, do the math is not going to work. So if you're just eating one meal a day, you are not getting your macro goals. Protein should be our focus, adjusting your fat and your carbs based on your activity, but the fat and the protein should be together. If you're eating more uh, animal-based diet, natural fats should have fat naturally in that protein. All right. So there you go. Now training the female athlete, Dr. Dan Plew's program taught us in the endure coaching program. 
females have better endurance the first half of their cycle. So that's follicular is the first half to ovulation is like somewhere around day 14. Sprint performance may be best during late follicular. So after your cycle before ovulation and early luteal. During the luteal phase, female athletes have higher RPE. So I put this on my chart. So this is another, I don't know why I have this slide here because it's not <laughs> tying into what I'm talking about today, but just bonus information. Your heart rate for a female is going to be higher. Your RPE, your glucose, everything is just off in your luteal phase because your body is trying to hibernate so it can make a baby. That's how I think of it. <laughs> so training the female athlete. Now let's go to back to fasting with Dr. Mindy. We talked about this in my podcast. I was trying to find information on her blogs and videos, but just to summarize, if you are just looking for weight loss, remember this is different. Go back to what that two slides ago, performance, high performing athletes going to be different than someone that's just doing low heart rate exercise, maybe once a day, just trying to burn fat. That's when fasted exercise, if you are fat adapted, can be beneficial. So when you exercise in the morning fasted state, your blood sugar is already at its lowest. Hmm. That's funny because blood sugar is a little bit higher. And so it's a good time to exercise in the morning fast because you have glucose a little bit higher because of cortisol is higher in the morning. Low blood sugar means that you don't have glucose readily available for the energy and your body will have to look elsewhere for an energy source. So you'll start searching for fat. So if there's no glucose available, so muscle glycogen, if it's empty, your body will start to, in your liver, your body will start to go after what's called glycogen. So without glucose available, your body will start to go after something called glycogen. Glycogen is a sugar that's your body has stored in liver fat and skeletal muscle. Burning the cumulative sugar stores is often the missing link from many people and weight loss success. So weight loss is your goal. Exercise and fasted state can be helpful. So when you have a protein shake before workout, protein shake will provide your body with immediate readily available sugar for energy. Your glucose levels will rise upon consuming the shake. And when you exercise the body, we'll use this glucose for energy and we'll never get stored in the glycogen. So I think some of that has changed. I think this is a couple of years ago. Again, you always have to look at what's current. But when we're teaching the body, when we've trained low race high, we are teaching the body to tap into fat stores or fuel when we don't have glycogen stores available. When we become fat adapted, our body gets used to not having carbs as the main fuel source to metabolize. So it's going to use that fat unless you do a high intensity interval training workout. So we want to get the right amount of food. If you need something beforehand that keeps you in a fat burning state. Now, Dr. Mindy said last uh, spring, we did this podcast on my show. The low carb athlete is strength training is done best in a fasted state. She said, if you're eating a lot of carbs, especially the female athlete, probably carb loading as a pre-workout routine, the body had all those years to store the extra sugar somewhere. So if it stores typically in your liver, and then we'll start to store it as fat and then store it in your muscles. Every time you work out, you're releasing that storage from your muscle and the harder the workout, the more release of this glucose, which is great. So she looks at this when you're doing a hard workout, you're wiping this, like, you know, wiping the slate to clean. So you're emptying the glycogen stores out. So if you're working out in a fasted state, I need to put some glycogen in to get more glycogen stores back. So you need to need it for the next day. So the strength training, you're going to go after the muscles in a deep way, which is why you can do it in a fasted state. But then that's really power up and protein because you just broke that muscle down. So when you're doing an endurance workout, like a long run, she says, you are going to want to break your fast. You can break your fast, but you're going to want to break it with a little more carb rich because if you're using, if you're more anaerobic, so I think it depends on what heart rate you're training at. And that's why we train zone one, two Maffetone method that we're doing the max aerobic function heart rate. And then we're getting ourselves training by our heart rate. So we're not burning that much glycogen. So everyone has different theories. So this is why we need to you know, look at the whole picture. Now, another thing we talked about in the podcast last year, 
Dr. Mindy said, if, so I said, if you're doing a speed run in the morning, doing a high, low heart rate, deplete that muscle glycogen. And then if you're doing something as endurance workout that you're burning more fat, it's going to be different. So adding in that carb timing post-workout, if you're doing a two day, so we want to look at the why it's so much easier to just work with people one-on-one and figure out what workout you're doing, what, what's going on that day, what are you eating for dinner and really plan it out. So Dr. Mindy was talking about if you're doing strictly weightlifting or doing TRX strength training, you can break your fast with protein, but when you're going to replenish it after workout, if you're doing a fasted workout and you're going harder, you might feel a little bit fatigued. So you might want to look at what food maybe you should have before or after. So she talks a lot about the sex hormone progesterone. If you're doing too much stress and progesterone needs you to keep cortisol down and exercise spikes cortisol and fasting spikes cortisol. So that's why we want to change how we train during the luteal phase for females. So Dr. Mindy can check her podcast out and all of her videos and her new book coming out that just came out actually the fasting like a girl. So more information on fasting, but just want to go over, you know, when should you eat or not eat? And that's that energy flux. We talk a lot about, but training low and a fasted state or eating calories before workouts, fat and protein, keeping the carbs low to stay fat burning lean athletes. You need to make sure you're getting enough calories in that eating window and not be such a short time restricted feeding window. Cause we're not getting those calories. We're not getting enough protein in and especially if you're working out more than once a day. So we want to make sure our fasted exercise and time restricted eating is monitored. So we're not going too long without eating too often and alter it. Now, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, her information was a couple of years old. So I don't know, I was trying to find what's new with her, but I actually, I joined her uh, inner circle group. So I asked this for the next Q and a session, what are the updated research for female athletes fasting, but just in general for men and women exercise in the fasted state induces adaptation to mitochondria in the muscle and adipose tissue, increasing fatty acid metabolism blunted by pre-exercise feeding exercise in fasted state increases the release of fatty acids stored in adipose tissue, and then uses those fat fatty acids for energy in the muscle and adipose tissue. So, which means fat burning. And it also increases the use of intramuscular triglycerides over glycogen in muscle tissue. Exercise while fasting can also cause mitochondria to increase gene activity in genes related to fatty acid metabolism, making them more efficient as using fat for energy. These adaptations were blunted by pre-exercise feeding. So this is where it gets confusing. You think, well, if that all happens, dang, I want to go fasted workout. I don't want to eat anything. If I eat any calories, that's going to blunt all those benefits. Wow. So here's what she else, else she said, pre-exercise feeding did enhance performance in the long duration 60 minutes or more. So if you are going longer than 60 minutes, your performance will be improved if you do eat something beforehand, but pre-exercise feeding did not have an effect on aerobic training shorter than 60 minutes on your performance. So that means you can go fasted for men. If you're just doing a 60 minute workout and if you're doing low heart rate, think men and women can do this, a fasted exercise. If you're doing zone one exercise. Now, pre-exercise feeding also significant or slightly enhanced anaerobic exercise running till exhaustion, but had no f- effect on high intensity interval training. So interesting research found my fitness.com with Rhonda Patrick. She also talks about in another, uh, blog or the podcast I was reading pre feeding, pre-workout. So it just summarized what I just was going over improves long duration over 60 minutes, improves performance does not impact workout if you're doing less than 60 minutes. So we went over that. So eating before a long workout will help you. So strength training, if it's less than 60 minutes, anaerobic or HIIT training, you can do it fasted. And the benefits of training fasted, as I said, increases glucose sensitivity, mitochondrial adaptations to using fatty acids, 
think fat, working out a fatted, fatted, fasted state, please your glucose, your glycogen stores in your liver and then your muscle. And then you're using more of the fatty acids that are available. This increases the use for fatty acid metabolism. So just summarizing the previous article. So she talked also about if amino acids before workout, if you're trying to grow muscle studies in the anal anabolic window pre or post workout to increase muscle muscle growth was a question. And this is what I've been reading lately, longer times available to improve muscle protein window post workout. So it's not that 30 minutes right after your workout, you have to have protein. It says as long as you get it in throughout the day, post workout, that will still help you grow muscle. Other question was doing fasted workouts. So you're 16 hours fasting or you are not storing protein during a fasted strength training. You may need to consume protein post-workout. If you're not storing protein to look at that. If you're doing a longer, a fasted workout. All right. And then another person is going to come on the podcast is Dr. Lene, Lene, Lene. Female athletes should focus on fueling themselves adequately that they're able to cover all the metabolic processes and also the energy expended during exercise. This is likely to mean eating all their main meals, including pre during and post exercise snack in there to work out how to do it should be individual speak to someone, a coach, dietitian, nutritionist that understands working with athletes. Don't work with someone. If you're endurance athletes that never works with them, they don't get it. So you want to kind of adjust course, correct fasting men and women. So Dr. Linai says, do it properly. Know when you train low and when you train high, balance it out. So as I say, matching your nutrition with your fueling, if every workout is trained low session, your ability to train at high intensity will suffer. You can train low for lower intensity, longer workouts. Don't abandon the carbs for high intensity workouts or competitions. So that's what she says, you know, experiment, adjust, see what works best for your performance. More doesn't necessarily mean better. Don't make the mistake of shifting train low concept to overall diet that is low in carbs. She also says, build a trusted support team, working with a qualified coach that understands your goals, work life situation, dietary requirements, and the way you like to train and key optimizing your training, achieving nutrition goals. So of course I am interviewing her because I say the same thing. So the research is clear that training in glycogen depleted state does not, or sorry, does increase your ability to oxidize fat. So in theory, the metabolic changes that occur in athletes when training in a glycogen depleted state should translate to enhanced exercise capacity. There is no research showing that changes in fat oxidation translate into performance benefits yet. So, which I say often that you have to just see what your goal is. If I'm trying to work on performance, I'm training for a race, I'm trying to get faster. Don't be afraid of eating something. You can use S fuels and it'll keep you in a fat burning state. And then you can have strategic carb timing as Vespa or something else that you can find that doesn't spike your glucose up high and get on that blood sugar roller coaster, but it can enhance your performance. So we can't just fear eating at all. So I think it goes into context of what is your workout, what's the purpose and what else is going on with your lifestyle and meal planning. So Dr. Lene says, it's also important to remember that you can't train as hard or as fast without readily available carbs to rely on. Don't expect to feel particularly good. Either exercising on an empty stomach can increase production of stress hormone cortisol which can lead to the breakdown of muscle tissue because you're in catabolic and can have an effect on your mood. She also said exercise in depleted state can depress your immune system. I think that if you're doing too much of everything, your immune system is down, could increase your risk of injury, illness. And so all these factors might compensate for positive effects of low glycogen training. So you have to see all these different studies and see if they've been, they've been done a male athlete. So you have to make sure the females have different hormone differences. So look at men versus women, the HP access. We look at kiss peptin. We look at research on women matching their exercise, fasting and nutrition to the hormone cycle. So you can look into that on these slides and look on the free eBooks, on my website, but lots more information to share here. Of course, I'm going over time, 
but just really go back and look at these slides on the YouTube channel. What is the ideal day? Starting out with an easy walk, yoga, swim, outdoor activity, you know, light exposure is really important in the morning. Have your dinner three to four hours before bed and then wait overnight until eat after your workout that is low intensity and then you eat. So I'll work out, lift at 5.30 in the morning, go for a run or a walk after that. And then I wait till I shower. And then by the time I'm kind of feeling hungry, it might be 9.30, 10 o'clock and getting some calories in. That's why I'm experimenting with my coffee creamer, adding a little bit of collagen, MCT oil and heavy cream all blended together and having calories that way, but still keeps me in fat burning state. And then I should be doing more Keon aminos before and post-workout. So think of that fasted sessions two to three times a week is what you want to limit for athletic performance, fat loss goals, fasted sessions that are zone one heart rate five to six times a week. If you're doing, you know, the zone one, I don't think more than that. And then female cycling should limit fasted exercise days around late mid to late follicular. So when your cycle finishes and then before ovulation. So we want a time when women are doing fasted exercise and your intensity and looking at what you ate the night before. So lots to go into. You can find the video on the next topic here is figuring out how to be fat adapted. So looking at what we talk about many times on the show, how to be a low carb athlete and your IQ, Dr. Dan Plew's workout or workout program showing phase one, phase two, and phase three. And then we go into phase four and how to match your nutrition with your fueling during this low carb cold keto phase where you're trying to become a fat adapted athlete. And this is a good time to do it off season. And I talked about this in previous podcasts on things to work on and watch and observe in your phase one phase two, what we're doing, and then cold keto and matching that to your female cycle. Men can do it for a couple of weeks and just go 50 grams carbs a day. And then phase four, we work on finding your sweet spot and adjusting your macros, adjusting your fat, tracking your HRV and tracking your glucose and ketones just to start, you don't have to do that all the time, but just when you're getting started, it really helps to get that feedback from your body. And then a low carb athlete can be a hundred, 130 grams a day. Sometimes some people that are, have larger suitcases, which means more muscles and doing more higher intensity workouts, they can tolerate up to 200 grams. Some people more if they're training more. So low carb athlete for you could be totally different than me. And we want to look at that. So females, everything's going to be different for you if we pre perimenopausal. So let me know if you have questions, set up a discovery call with me, get those downloads on my website, debbiepots.net. And we will go into all this a little bit more on another Debbie solo cast podcast to talk about all these subjects with you. So hopefully that helped you let me know your questions and we'll talk soon. Thanks for listening and watching.